that's great. Uh, so I will be presenting as uh, Danielle introduced already about the 22 Things project. And I have Case Hoff with me to help me out a little bit. He did the part of it too. So I'm really excited to show you a bit of what we are currently doing in the project. Um, and just to be clear, this is uh, well part of a bigger Dutch initiative uh, Dutch uh, initiative. We have a Dutch national coordination point on research data management and within that bigger group we set out in uh, broad in the Netherlands uh, this RDA adoption uh, project. So this is a quite strong collaboration in the full Dutch society. So I'm really excited about what we were able to do within the RDA uh, grant project. So if you can switch slides. Yes. Uh, so I'm, I'm not sure whether you all know the 23 Things uh, resource. It was originally drafted by the Libraries for Research Data Interest Group and it uh, included about 23 tips, uh, as the name suggests, uh, for libraries or for library staff to start working on research data management. But we were really excited about the existence of this resource, but we thought it could be updated and also be adjusted to uh, different audiences. And those audiences would be able to use it as a shared reference tool uh, for knowledge within their own discipline and their own uh, kind of people uh, on research data management. And uh, by adopting the 23 things output yeah, for multiple audiences, we expect it to be improving national cooperation and a common understanding of RDM across, well, a lot of uh, different practitioners and supporters, at least within the Netherlands, but I think we have a very broad scope within the project. Well, we're currently still working on the output of the project. We did most of the steps already and we're currently into the phase of uh, setting out the tool and dissemination phase. What I'm going to tell you today is, well, we have three parts, so a summary of the project, and then a showcase of the 23 things tool, just to be sure we did it uh, via slides and not a live tool because it's still work in progress, but it will pretty much show what we envision the tool to be. And then we uh, end up with, uh, well, showing how you can contribute as a potential future adopter of a similar project or of a user of the tool. Um, so if you can switch slides. Thank you. So we have four phases and I copied and pasted from, uh, well, a few slideshows from uh, poses we did all over the, uh, well, during the project. And uh, the first phase was creating a Dutch nationwide commitment for the project. As I told already, it was for, uh, well, at least within the Netherlands, really relevant to have a lot of uh, um, people on board, organizations on board on this project. And we've written an implementation plan, including communication aspects. And we shared it with the, our pool of experts within national coordination point research data management and other Dutch stakeholders. And if you're interested, you can uh, use the uh, link because we put all our output on Zenodo. If you click the link, you can uh, check out our implementation plan. So next slide, please. So the second phase included adjusting the 22 things. So as it, uh, well, the resource is from 2015, so it's already a bit outdated, we noticed. So we start with creating, well, what we call a local version of the 23 things originally for the Dutch community. So we updated relevant uh, links, included GDPR, uh, open science, fair resources, but we know that, that hardly anything is typically Dutch. So it's more uh, by the Dutch community than to the Dutch community. Uh, and we uh, tend to include different audiences, as I've mentioned already, and which I'm going to show you as well. Um, so the first version, the kind of intermediate version, is available on Zenodo, and you can click it by uh, using the link but we've already improved it in the third phase, so you better use that resource. So the next slide, please. So what we did, um, we asked input from the different uh, stakeholders and um, well, audiences in the Netherlands to create uh, 23 
23 things, versions for research and PhD candidates, for students, for data and subject librarians, for data stewards, for IT support staff and specialists, and also for research software engineers. And we also included policymakers. So we figured out in the Dutch community that while having just one version, uh, for well, it was originally uh, developed by the library, so it kind of focused at the library. We figured out that there were many different communities that could benefit from uh, the 23 things. Um, so we asked input from uh, the broader community to add to, to those different resources. Um, if you click on the next slide, please. Um, so I'm later on going to show you a bit of the outcomes of the 23 things versions, but I, I wanted to add that in the third phase, which is the phase we're currently in, is we're trying to get those 23 things adopted as well by those communities. So we ask them help to put input for different audience versions. We also wanted to include those in existing trainings in the Netherlands to be able to see whether the, uh, the different audiences could work with those uh, versions. Well, we had to adjust that a little bit because due to COVID-19, we couldn't do any live sessions, but we uh, transferred it into an online tool. Uh, if you go to the different slide, uh, next slide, sorry. Well, we have phase four and phase four includes uh, dissemination of our experiences and final versions. So that's just a lot of outreach. We're currently uh, trying to uh, well, make steps in. So next slide. Then a little bit on the output. So as I've mentioned already, is that we created seven different versions for different audiences on the 23 things. And these are just 23, in most cases, more than 23, straight tips with resources you can click on different things, such as data management plan, trainings, uh, uh, citing, uh, coding, etc. So a lot of relevant resources. Um, and what I wanted to show you, if you click if you do the next slide, please. Thank you. We've we've drafted those um, well kind of static versions that are available on Sonodo into a tool that allows you to uh, add to the, those different resources, but also allows allows you to kind of draft a learning path of the things that are interested to you as well, coming from a specific audience. So what we've done, it's only a better version. So um, the slides are a bit better than the live version yet, but it's work in progress. Uh, we uh, took all the 23 tips uh, times seven uh, and uh, put them into a database. And based on that database, we have those uh, seven audiences still available in the two. We have 16 different themes that are relevant for those audiences. We have 13 more different uh, types of resources that a user could pick from. And then we have the data lifecycle included in the tool as well. Uh, you can really see it's, like it's work in progress because there aren't 11 options. It's actually six options, but the database isn't updated uh, yet. Uh, so if you're really curious, you can click the link yourself, but we included some slides to show you our experiences. So if you do the next slide. So this is Boris. I want to introduce you to Boris, who is a postdoctoral researcher at the TU Delft, one of our universities, and he has shared his code with one of his PhD students. And she asked him, how should I cite this code software in my thesis? So if you go to the next slide. Then you can see that Boris selects his audience. He is a researcher or PhD candidate. Next slide, please. He clicks his theme. Well, his theme is citing data and coding because that is where his uh, PhD uh, asks about. Next slide, please. And then he gets as an answer to his uh, request two resources. So an example, how to enable software citation and promoting the scientific value of data encoding. So if you go to the next slide, there you can see the first resource Boris gets. Um, with the help of the tool, he's able to follow the FAIR software route 
and help him choose how to cite his software best. Next slide, please. And Boris gets another uh, reference via the tool. He gets uh, a Force 11 resource on how to do proper citation following those uh, Force 11 uh, guidelines. Next slide. Um, so via the tool, uh, Boris and other users are able to design to design their own learning path. So they can choose between their audience, different teams, different types, different phases of the life cycle to get their own uh, needs. If you go to the different slide, next slide, that is and it's shown. Thank you. Uh, so for instance, based on your own learning path, you're able to um, access information as a data steward on data management planning. You get the resource of Purdue University libraries on data management planning and self-assessment questionnaires. Or you get the resource on guidance for review of data management plan by the National Institute of Standards and Technology. You also get the resource on Scientific Europe with practical guidelines to international alignment of research data management. And there we have a typical Dutch resource. You, all, resource. you also uh, fire the tool, get access to the NVO, which is one of our funders, DMP assessment rubric. Go to the next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, so this was just a quick uh, showcase of our 23 Things tool. It's still work in progress, but we'll expect to release it uh, for the full uh, version in about a month time. And I think the nice aspect of this tool is that it includes the first phase and uh, email address in which, which you can use to add your own things to the tool or adjust broken links or do suggestions. Uh, in the near future, we're planning to uh, increase that a little bit, so make maybe a, a, an add resource button, but that's just a beta version for now. Uh, so if you want to contribute, if you have specific resources that could be included and that are relevant for different audiences, uh, please contact us and we'll make sure to include your links uh, to the tool. Thank you.